House of Representatives moves to enhance accountability in the workings of the Central Bank of Nigeria. House mandates IGP to take over investigations and ensure safe return of abducted prospective core members. And House calls for urgent military action to checkmate resurgence of terrorist activities in parts of the country. Hello and thanks for joining us on you and your reps on the NTA. I'm Victor as a welcome. The House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill for an act to amend the Central Bank of Nigeria Act 2004. The bill, sponsored by Representative Francis Waive, seeks to enhance accountability as well as effective checks and balances in the governance structure and operations of the Apex Bank. This is a very important uh, bill that I'm Lawmakers proposing. agree that the Central Bank Act of 2004 is overdue for amendment of critical sections. It includes separating the role of chairman of the board from that of the governor and reinforcing the oversight role of the National Assembly in approving the budget of the Apex Bank. Even on the Naira note redesigned, till today nobody knows what was expended on it. If there's a budget to guide this, then the uh, institution of the National Assembly in charge of banking institutions and regulations will have a document to cross-check and do proper oversight. There were a series of impunity by CBN because I was simply because they were empowered by the provisions of the act to do what they did. And we have seen a lot of loopholes which has led to abuses, particularly the last central bank governor, who whilst on the seat was even contesting a meeting to contest for presidency and we appear to be helpless because there are no sufficient provisions in the act. I want to send the mover or the presenter of this bill, but not in total. Those in support of this motion should say aye. aye. Those against should say nay. The ayes have it. Black. A bill to establish the Federal University of Agriculture, Utokbu Delta State, also scaled second reading, while motions to investigate the privatization of the Shobo steel rolling mills and collapse of rural electrification scheme in parts of Bauchi State were adopted. To ensure the replacement of damaged poles and connection to the grid of the following communities, Zubu, Bailey, Gajidiba, Dongu, Bukul, Kilbori, Banjiri, Zigao, Zirami, Uzum, Sabansara, Zankan, Tagwai, Jau, Foguji, respectively to the national grid of Sheregia, the federal constituency of Bauchi State. Meanwhile, the House has considered and unveiled legislative agenda for the 10th Assembly. Strengthening good governance, that's number one. Number two is improving national security. Number three is law reform. Number four, economic growth and development. Number five is social sector reform and development. Number six is inclusive and open parliament. Number seven is influencing and directing Nigeria's foreign policy. Number eight is climate change and environmental sustainability. At its inaugural sitting, the House Committee on Information, National Orientation, Ethics and Values promises robust oversight of all parastatals under its purview. Most especially the National uh, Orientation Agency to ensure that they disseminate the right information to the society. Meanwhile, cases of abduction of some prospective core members by criminal gangs made headlines in recent times, and this has not gone down well with lawmakers at the Green Chamber. The House of Representatives has therefore mandated the Inspector General of Police to take over the investigations of abducted prospective core members to ensure their swift and safe rescue. Mr. Speaker, from Akwaibum State. Sequel to a motion of urgent public importance sponsored by Representative Uyime Idem and nine other lawmakers, the House condemns the abduction of prospective core members, describing the trend as worrisome. On November 1, 2023, an Akwaibum Transport Company, AKTC, vehicle conveying passengers from Uyo to Kogi State was hijacked by a gunman 
and a core member from Akwaribom State, Ms. Imabong Samuel, was on her way to her place of primary assignment, PPA, abducted alongside 11 other members with an initial 15 million naira ransom currently negotiated to 2 million naira, placed as a prerequisite uh, for each release. Five bills passed second reading at Wednesday's plenary. They include the bill for an act to amend the Nigeria Minerals and Mining Act 2007, as well as the bill for an act to regulate corporate social responsibility in Nigeria. The Corporate Social Responsibility Bill seeks to mandate and regulate social responsibility in Nigeria by establishing a monitoring unit housed within the Federal Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning. Concern about the current challenges bedeviling the solid mineral sector because of illegal mining activities. To amend the Nigeria Mining and Minerals Act 2007 to provide for the regulation of artisanal mining and the provision of stiffer penalties for offenses. Some infrastructure related motions were also adopted. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources to provide funds for the rehabilitation and upgrading of Uro Kesun Dam, Gaso Local Government Area in 2024 budget estimate. Urge the Federal Ministry of Works to include the development of underpasses at Wawa and Kara sections of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway before the demobilization of the contractor currently working in that axis. Also, urge the Federal Ministry of Works to construct roads to and from Wawa and Kara markets along the expressway to serve as a recovery zone for vehicles training from the expressway. At its inaugural sitting, the House Committee on Federal Capital Territory urged the FCT administration to step up its revenue drive to fast-track development of the nation's capital. There are many ways FCT loses revenues. I've told you, most of these are estates in Abuja. They don't have title documents. We will continue to emphasize the need to decongest Abuja. For instance, as part of immediate term activity, the Honourable Minister is providing five kilometer roads in each of the area councils. In the face of harsh economic realities, members of the committee appealed to the FCT administration to ensure the demolition of shanties with a human face. Mr. Pamsek, people are in pain. People don't have a lot of money, they don't have, even they can't eat. People who have built their houses for over 20 years wake up to see their houses demolished. Mr. Chairman, I, will, I want you to take this um, into heart because a widow came to me crying. In the meantime, the House has rescinded an earlier resolution on the deplorable living conditions of officers of the Nigeria Police Force. This follows a motion to that effect by Chair of the House Committee on Rules and Business, Francis Waive. When the motion first came, the thinking of the uh, sponsor of the motion was that the Ministry of Interior and Police Affairs should liaise with the Bureau of Public Enterprise to assess the problems with barracks, uh, police barracks particularly, uh, owned by uh, government, and um, see the situation, whether they are able to manage them or even perhaps even put them out on sale and privatize or something. But uh, on a second thought, the, there's this thinking that rather than going to those people, we should rather ask our own uh, in-house committee on police affairs to undertake a nationwide assessment of uh, police barracks to, you know, come up with the, a paper on the level of infrastructural uh, decay of uh, police barracks and then uh, find out uh, what can be done to ameliorate the sufferings of the people or of the policemen and uh, the men and officers of the Nigerian police force in a way of, of uplifting their morale. So that's what we did today. And the motion passed for instead of going to Bureau of Public uh, Enterprise and going to uh, uh, the Minister of Police Affairs, our own in-house committee on police affairs 
We love to do this investigation, take a tour around, come up with a report. It's on the basis of that report that we can now uh, present to the executive and say, these are the problems we find, these are the things we recommend that you do. And the House of Representatives has called for urgent military action to checkmate the resurgence of terrorist activities in the northeast and other parts of the country. This followed several motions adopted on the floor of the House. Lawmakers note that recent terrorist attacks on communities in Borno and Yobe states have left some rice farmers killed and several others missing while calling for military intervention. On Saturday, 4th November 2023, Heavily armed Boko Haram terrorists attack Zabarmari farmers in their rice field working in the village of Koshebe, Karakut Bulabulin of Jere, Strog, Mafa local government area of Borno State. Violent gangs have set up camps in and around Ogu and Ocha community in Obaru federal constituency, sacked the residents, kidnapped the traditional ruler, killed and maimed many unchallenged. To urge the military to fortify security in Gaidam and in the Sarim local governments and all other local government areas in northern Yobe. We visit the report of the Ninth House of Representatives Special Committee on National Security, review the document and consider its recommendations. The motion is referred to the Committee on Army and Disaster and Management Preparedness. Other motions to bridge infrastructure gaps were adopted and referred to relevant committees for legislative compliance. On the urgent need for immediate relief and rehabilitation of 300 meters collapse bridge linking Asabase community in Indokwa East local government area of Delta State and Uzere in Isoko South local government area of Delta State. Also note that the deplorable state of the Lagos Adokta Expressway from Abuli Eba to Songo, which has become a death trap for motorists and commuters. Urge the Federal Ministry of Works to, as a matter of urgency, rehabilitate the Dukudarazo Gombe Road and upgrade the road to Tronke in the list of federal roads in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Pensions at its inaugural meeting has pledged to investigate the failure of employers to meet pension obligations. Developing a sustainable pension scheme for the teaching cyber at all tiers of government and also recommending rescue mechanism for payment of outstanding pensions to teachers in Nigeria. The committee says its work plan will be made public soon. Also debated was the bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers Act to establish Federal Medical Center Kwale. The member representing Ndokwa Ukwane Federal Constituency of Delta State, Namdezechi, led that debate. Health is important to every government. You also agree with me that the Federal Medical Center in Asaba it's little distance from Kuala. So that necessitated my sponsoring of that bill. And when I sent it to, it also gives support to Ndokwa and this environment. Because the populace in, in Kuala, you know, Kuala is a metropolitan city that where different tribes reside on. And for quality to, at this level, without FMC, is uncalled for. And that is why I said it is important I sponsor this bill so that our people will have access to health care and uh, also enjoy government uh, presence because when this is established, a lot of people passing through pressure of traveling, this time from Kuali to Asaba, we no longer do that. And the people will be very happy because uh, a lot of them, the, the private clinics, 
also very, very exorbitant. And a lot of our people cannot assess private clinic. Or less on critical situation whereby there is no way. And someone, for instance, having a very critical ch challenge, before traveling from Kuali to, to Asaba, that person might also face with a lot of uh, effect of that distance. So somebody that needs to be attended to urgently, when the team is established in our in Kuali, it gives help to our people because Kuali is one place that is uh, the, 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 the number of persons staying there very much. And uh, the people will be very happy because a lot of things like the children, pregnant women and all that, they will have access to, to health care. A lot of things in the federal medical centers, some drugs are administered to people freely. You know, but we don't have such in, uh, in quality. So with this bill, I know our people in the Kukwani federal constituency and the community uh, will be very happy. Utabu Baseho will be very glad because they are not just going to be the only beneficiaries of this establishment. It is the quality and the environment. And the environment, both the houses, the Yorubas, the Ibos, every people are there in Kuala. It's a very big, uh, a very big city that uh, need to have federal medical center. Appropriation could also mean allocation, depending on who's defining it, of course. But let's concern ourselves with its legislative meaning and significance. Over now to Chair of the House Committee on Rules and Business. That's on our Legislative Terms and Tools segment. The law provides that the President of the Commander-in-Chief will present estimates uh, in a joint sitting of uh, both chambers. And um, while presenting the estimates, he won't be able to read it through everything A to Z, but he gives the highlights of expected uh, revenues for the uh, year, and then how they intend to expand these sums. Usually, there are benchmarks, like um, when you look at the sources of revenue, you want to know where you are expecting them from. If our country, Nigeria, oil is the minister of our economy, so you want to say this is the quantity of oil you expect to produce um, um, per day, and then this is the average price you think you sell for uh, during the year. Usually you do, you fix the uh, production per day based on per quota, uh, and then you average it thinking about whether it will go up or go down, you know. The same thing with the issue of the price. So uh, the president presents these estimates before a uh, joint session of the of parliament. It's our business now to look at this, uh, not only the income, also the expenditure uh, for the various ministries, both capital, um, um, uh, overheads, and uh, personnel, and all that cost, how money should be expended and then the various uh, ministries, agencies, and departments of government. Uh, I must say that until the legislature looks at this critically and approve it, it is not law. And the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, makes it illegal for anybody, anybody, to spend one cobble from Nigeria's money without it being appropriated for by the National Assembly, or in the case of a state, by the State Assembly or Council as it were. So it's, 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 uh, it's something very serious such that we consider the Appropriation Act as the most important law of parliament.
internal security of the National Assembly appears to be a priority for the 10th Assembly. So that takes up the committee segment this episode. Here is the House Committee Chair on Internal Security of the National Assembly, Mohamed Garba. The task before this committee or the mandate of this committee, first and foremost, is to uh, make sure that there is law and order in the National Assembly. Because in this place, in the National Assembly, you have 360 members, you have 109 senators, you know, and each and every one of them has five aides. Then you have the National Assembly staff. Roughly in a day, the staff working in this place may be more than 10,000 working and then visitors who come in into this place. Roughly we receive over 10,000 people coming in. So you see it's a place that needs security. Security is very important. Before you enter, the time you enter, where you go, what you do, how to maintain law and order within the premises, how to park vehicles, uh, what is the parking space in case of fire, what happens in case of any disaster, what happens in case of any terrorism, terrorist attacks, we don't pray for it. Mm -hmm. So what happens in the National Assembly? So uh, these are all included in our task and we have to manage it very well to make sure that both honorable members and distinguished senators are well protected in this place. Normally, sergeant at arms are the custodian of security in the National Assembly. But uh, because of the peculiarity of our country, you will find out that uh, you have the police, the normal police uh, all over, they are there. You have the special protection uh, police, which we call SPU, they are all over. Then you have the DSS, the secret police. Maybe their role is to gather intelligence and maybe prevent whatever uh, whatever that is uh, not good and maybe give intelligence to the other security organizations. Then you have the fire service, you have the road safety, you have the immigration, you have the civil defense. There are many, they are all here present. Eh? We even have a DPO in charge of the National Assembly, divisional police officer in charge of the National Assembly. The gate of the National Assembly now has changed. We are trying to put everything to become digital, eh? even having access into the National Assembly. Now, in the next couple of months, uh, you wouldn't find all the security men hanging around. Everything will be controlled by the computer, it will capture your iris, technology. Technology, it will be technology driven. You know, a visitor coming coming to see a member on floor A or floor 1 will not have access to go to the second floor and third floor and fourth floor. So you, if your assignment is only to cover the chamber of the National Assembly, you will not have the privilege of coming again into this office, you know, until I give you permission to come so. Because the National Assembly of today is very porous, very, very porous. You see people coming, uh, selling a lot of goods, uh, people selling suya, people selling cloth, people selling ground, not going into the National Assembly, which should not be the case. So we are making it technology driven. We are making sure that uh, not even all vehicles will, uh, will come into the National Assembly. Well, you and your reps will be watching to see how these changes impact the business of legislation. The program returns next week. I'm Victor Azu. Join us again.